Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, tutorial we're going to look. At, uh, I'm going to take a closer look at integers in C++. And although this topic is not um, the most interesting, and we're going to get onto more interesting stuff soon, it's uh, important to know. So you don't have to memorize everything that I show you here, but it's good if you at least see it and just play with it a little bit, uh, because it will stand you in good stead for the future. Um, so I, I kind of want to run this past you. We, we've already seen that you can type stuff like int value equals 77, 777 or what, whatever. And you can do C out value and uh, endler. And if we run this program, then it's going to output 777. Now there's, um, there are limits to how big an integer you can fit into this value. And that's because we're only allocating a certain amount of the computer's memory here. Um, so uh, the question is, like, how big an integer can you actually put in there? And what happens if you put one in that's too big? Let's put a really big number in here. Let's just make something up like this. That's not going to fit. So let's run this program. And we can see that the number we've got out is basically nonsense. It bears no relation to the number that we tried to put in. Because we're, we're trying to put too big a number into too little memory. And we've also got an, a warning in Eclipse here, overflow and implicit constant conversion. So I guess this is a constant. We're trying to convert it to a, an int, and it's just not going to go. So I'll change it back to something sensible. So how do you know like, what value is too big to put in an int. Well, we can explore this a bit further um, in two ways. One thing we can do is uh, here below the include iostream statement type in hash and include limits. And if this doesn't work for your compiler, you might have to do something slightly different, like it might be limits.h or something like that. And if that is the case, um, well, I'm sorry, uh, but you might have to Google um, limits for your particular compiler, but I think this will work on hopefully most. So type include limits, and that's got to go below this iostream include and before this using namespace standard. And you can then do stuff like this, C out um, int underscore max endler get rid of that stray bracket there and let's run this and that will show you the maximum value that you can store in an integer which is this so let's uh, let's put in here max int value and there's also like a I need a, another kind of chevron thing here insertion operator there's also a minimum value that you can store in an int so let's put that in and that's int min. So if we run this, we can see the minimum and maximum values in the, in, um, that we can store in an int. And interestingly, um, notice that they're not the same. One's ending in uh, 4, 8 here, and the uh, maximum value is ending in 4, 7. So that they're not just, they're not just, uh, it's not just, one's just not positive and the other's negative. They're actually slightly different values off by one. And uh, I think we'll go in, into the reason for that uh, in a, a video or two down the line, because it's worth knowing. But um, you have to bear in mind that you can't fit all values into this int. And if you want to know what else is in, so, so this int max is like a constant that's stored in this file that we've um, included in our program here. We'll talk about that more later. But if you want to know what other values you can use in there, Go to a browser and if you search for limits, limits.h, then you can easily find a reference to this that will show you. So, so we're using like int min and int max, but there are others here that you can also use. So what if you want a bigger integer? Well, you can change int by typing long. You can say long int. Um, let's call this L value equals and some huge value that would not fit in an integer. And let's do C out and L value and endler. And let's see if that works. So if we run this now, so we build it and run it. And yes, 
they these values match. If we chose an int here, I don't think they would match. Let's try it because it would be overflowing the amount that you can store in an int. So this is not the same as this. But if you use long, then it works. Now there's also a short int, short int. Let's call it s value, and you can fit quite small values in this. Um, I'm not sure exactly what. Well, if we look at this file here, limits.h, we've got short max here. So this is the maximum value that you can fit in a short um, int. So let's go back to Eclipse and we should be able to fit that in there. And let's just do a C out on that. I'm going to copy this one and put S value and we'll compile it. Project build to get rid of that warning. Let's, let's just run it. I could have just hit the run button actually. So yeah, that works. Uh, so most of the time you can just use like int and you don't really have to worry. But if you've got a really big number, you have to worry. And sometimes you want to save memory if you've got like a whole load of ints and then you, you want to use a short value or there might be some other reason why you want to use it. Um, another thing you can do here is you can use the size of operator to find out how much memory these types actually use. So we could say here size uh, C out and size of um, int, let's say. And then I'm going to type size of, and this is this is technically an operator, like um, this is an operator. I guess equals is an operator. Never really thought about it to be honest. Plus is certainly an operator, and um, this is also an operator, although it's got multiple characters in it. It's not just one symbol, um, but we call these things operators. They kind of operate on data somehow, and this one requires two brackets like that, or well, that's how you most often use it. And then we type int in there. Or well, you could also type a variable name in there, like um, value or s value or whatever. Let's try this though, and end la. And if we run this, it's going to say size of int four. What's that for? Well, it's four bytes, or in other words, it's four times eight bits, which of course is thirty-two bits. So the maximum value you can fit in an int is going to be roughly, uh, not quite exactly, for reasons that we will get into. Uh, 2 to the power of 32. It's going to be in that region. Or uh, actually a little bit less than that, probably. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so um, probably half as much as that, come to think of it. Um, because basically we need one bit to represent whether it's signed or unsigned, it's negative or positive. But we will talk about that more in future. In the future. So basically, yeah, there's four bytes allocated here for an integer. And we could do this, a similar sort of thing with. Let's try it with short int and let's type here short int and see how many bytes are allocated for that. Uh, so we'll run this and we see that the short int is just two bytes. So the maximum number that you could represent in this would actually be two times um, eight. Well, two times eight is 16. And um, because we need one bit for the sign, it's going to be two to the power of 15, I suppose. If I'm losing you here, don't worry, I'm al almost losing myself. <laughs> but it's just important to know that there are sizes to these um, to these types and you, you can't, sometimes you need a different size type is the basic gist here. Uh, you also um, can have, for example, you can, you can use signed and unsigned with these as well. Like I can type unsigned int um, Let's call it u value equals, and then it can only be positive, it can't be negative, because we could put a negative value here. This is a signed in, meaning we can have negative or positive values in it, that's the default. Uh, so the default is a signed int. But if you type unsigned in front of it, then you can only have positive values in. And uh, that means you can store a bigger number in it, because you don't need to use one bit uh, internally to represent uh, a negative or positive sign. Uh, so some, sometimes those are useful as well. Let's just output that. It's not going to do anything very interesting, but let's, let's just run it. So uh, with the signed int um, here at the top, we've successfully represented a negative value. You can't have a negative value 
in an unsigned int, it's, you're going to get gobbledygook. That's the whole point of it. So that's not matching this. So if it's unsigned, it can only be positive, but you can fit a bit more into it. So sometimes that's useful. And a lot of compilers uh, let you type just long instead of long int like that. In fact, for all I know, they all do. Um, so often you see just long or just short by itself. Um, so yeah, we, we've covered integer types, and we've looked at limits. Dot, we've look at, looked at the limits.h file here. This is actually um, on your hard drive. There's probably a file called limits.h that we're bringing in with this kind of include symbol. But don't worry about that. We've looked at size of. So um, it's you know even if you just watch this video, it's better than nothing because uh, you're gonna kind of. Um, come to understand these different types as we carry on programming stuff in this course. But if you can be bothered, it w it's definitely really good if you um, just practice declaring uh, long and short un ints, uh, signed and unsigned ints. Try putting values into them. See what happens if you put a value in that's too big for the type. Try using size of to get information about the type. And um, maybe Google limits.h and just have a look at what's what's in there and that's good for the moment so this this will feel probably like a lot of information but um, the take-home message here is really just that uh, we've got long long ints ordinary ints short ints and they can also be signed and unsigned so you often need to pick the appropriate type for your particular program but most often you just use int so practice that if you can be bothered and in the next tutorial we're going to look at some more types or actually I might get into the details of um, exactly why um, the negative value of an in maximum negative value is not, the, is not the same but negative as the maximum positive value if you see what I mean and um, yeah and as always I'd say um, if it kind of goes over your head don't worry, because we're going to get on to more practical stuff very shortly. So do keep watching. So that's it for this vid video. And until next time. <laughs>